Hey, what's up guys? Stella from Other Gaming. I'm back with a brand new video, but before we get into that, guys, I'd like to give a huge shout out to our sponsors as always. So big shout out to Cardamatica. We would also like to give a big shout out to our newest Patreon. So big shout out to Case. We love you. If you guys would like to be awesome, just like Case and all the other Patreons, be sure to join our Patreon in the description down below. In that description, you'll find the links to our Facebook and our Discord as well. So be sure to check those out and join those. So without further ado, guys, let's get into this brand new 10 e deck profile. Alright guys, so starting off with the deck profile, uh, we're going to start off with the Tennies, the brand new Tennies. So we, we play triple copies of Adhara, Tenny Adhara. So this is, uh, so I'll, I'm just going to quickly go over uh, the effect that all the Tennies share. So if you control no effect monsters, whether it be no monsters at all or a normal monster, you can special summon them from your hand. Then they all have a secondary effect where you can banish them from your hand or graveyard to do something. So Adhara is a level 1 tuner and its effect is... You can banish it from your hand or graveyard to target a banished war monster and add it back to your hand. So it's really good because it helps you recycle your tenny, so it helps you grind if you need to. Uh, it's also a tuner, meaning you can go into some cute little synchro plays. And uh, yeah. The next we play triple copies of Tenny Spirit Mapura. So its effect is you can banish it from your hand or from your or from your graveyard, sorry, to negate the activation of a card that targets a normal monster or just a non-effect monster that you control which is really really cool because uh it's like granted there aren't cards like cards like veiler and cards like impermanence aren't going to be uh useful against your non-effect monsters as it is but cards like no material which kind of hurt are just stopped by this card because if you go summon out your uh your normal monster they go gnomit you go banish negate and it's really really nice it's also level four so you can make some nice xc's or maybe sync maybe even synchro plays with it so, yeah, so next up we have triple copies of Tenny Spirit Stana. So what Stana does is it gives you like uh, I guess like protection almost in a way. So if a face up non-effect monster you control non-effect monsters or monster you control are destroyed by battle or card effect, then you can banish from your graveyard and revive back one of those destroyed monsters. So it just helps you like almost like stall out your opponent or like if your opponent like hits you with like uh, like something that's annoying, if your opponent ends up popping a card during your turn to you know, interrupt your place, you can just banish Stana and revive back the monster and keep going. Really, really nice, gives you more protection. Uh, you play triple copies of Tenny Spirit Nahata, sorry, and what its effect is, is you can banish it from your hand or from your graveyard when it when a non-effect monster battles an opponent's monster, and the non the monster that's battling the non-effect monster loses fifteen hundred attack. So if I attack a non if I attack an effect monster with my normal monster, it loses fifteen hundred attack by banishing it. Really good, helps you get over uh, troublesome monsters. For example, cards like Borlo just absolutely just lose to it because you would attack with if you would attack into it with a monster with like two thousand or more attack, and then just banish it and it loses attack and you just kill it. Really, really cool card to play. And then you play the best Tenny in my opinion, triple copies of Tenny Spirit Vishuda. So what this card does is the only reason why I would why I think that some people don't consider it the best tenny is that it's not normal summonable. Like all the other tennies are fours and ones. So but the reason why this card can be a level seven and still be absolutely busted is that its effect is you can banish it from your hand or from your graveyard to target a card your opponent controls and return back to their hand. This card's out this card outs Colossus. It outs literally any floodgate in the game because it banishes from the hand or from the graveyard, meaning cards like Soul Drain, cards like Skill Drain, cards like Rivalry, just this card just outs fully. Really, really important to play this card. Once again, it does suck to draw multiples because it's not normal summonable, but it's it's whatever. It's a mandatory card to play in this deck, and I honestly love it. So that's it for the Tenny. You play the 15 Tenny, so three of everything. And then off to the supporting engine, you play the triple copies of Mirmur. So I know you guys are thinking Mirmur is a card that in the past has been associated with bricking and has been associated with just being a one of in general. But in this card, you actually really, really like Mirmur because it's a war monster, meaning you can just summon it, summon three tokens, and go into some crazy link plays like you guys will see later on in the video. Mirmur is Mirmur's ability to not only generate tokens but also bring itself down to a level 4 and being a tuner. It just has so much utility in the deck, plus a lot of basically all your cards are worms, so you can revive it very, very easily. Very, very good card. Then off to the last, I guess, supporting engine. You play the one copy of Phantom Sky Blaster. This deck never normal summons or hardly ever normal summons, so Phantom Sky Blaster is very, very good because. Once you get your Tenny plays going, you just normal Skyblasters, swarm the board with tokens, and then it, it allows you to make cards like Appaloosa, cards like Abyss Dweller, because 
Skyblast of 4. It just allows you to do a lot of degenerate stuff, and I love the card. Next off into the hand traps we are playing, we play double copies of Effect Veiler, double copies of Ghost Ogre, and triple copies of Ash. So, I, I chose to play these seven hand traps, three Ash, two Ogre, two Veiler. If you want, you can play around with it. You can even cut down the hand trap count, up, count if you want, just whatever you guys are comfortable with playing. But yeah, uh, I'm not gonna go too deep into it. Ash stops everything. Ogre stops most things, and Veiler is also similar to Ogre, just stops most things. So yeah, that's how you play the hand traps. Plus, you have a really cool card in this deck which allows you to draw cards during your opponent's turn, which can get you into your hand traps. Next off into your spells you play, you play the most busted spell in the deck and the best card in this deck, triple copies of Vessel of the Dragon Cycle. So, oh my god guys, this card is absolutely nuts for you guys who have never heard of this card for some reason. Its effect is, you activate it, then you can send one worm monster from your deck to the graveyard, then if you control a non-effect monster, or just a normal monster, then you can add one worm monster from your hand sorry, from your deck to your hand, that is of a different name than the one that you sent to the graveyard. Long story short, this card is Foolish Burial and Reinforcement of the Army in one card. Yu-Gi-Oh! has literally never ever seen a card like this, and honestly guys, this is the reason why I was even like attracted to the deck in the first place. The fact that they have a card which Foolishes and Rotas, like come on, like it does not get much better than that. Once again, Yu-Gi-Oh! has never seen a card like this before, so the fact that this deck has it, really really pushes this deck to the level where it can be played in a, in a semi-competitive format. Next off, you play triple copies of Flawless Perfection of the Tenny. Uh, this card does not help you get your plays going, unfortunately. Like I wish like on, like on activation, this card would add you a Tenny monster. Then it would be really good, or like a Tenny spell trap or something. Then once again, it would be a very, very good card. But it doesn't, which is fine. This is the card that I was talking about, which allows you to draw cards uh, during your opponent's turn. So its effect is when your opponent spell summons an effect monster while you control a normal monster, you can draw two cards. Which it, so it's once return effect, so it allows you to draw into your hand traps, which is why, if you guys notice, I don't play cards like Impermanence in this deck because once you've already established your board, if you draw into Impermanence with this card, it's just a dead card. But whereas all these cards all have their uses even once you've already made an established board. Uh, next off into the consistency spells, it's just double desires like. If you guys want, you can play three. Personally, I don't like three because then you draw multiples of it. You desire into desires. I don't like it. Two is the perfect number in my opinion. And if you guys want, you can even cut it down to one if you guys really don't want to draw desires off desires. But it's really up to personal preference. Desire is a very good card. You're, when you think about it, your whole deck is three of's. And the only card that is a one of in this deck is Phantom Sky Blaster, which if it gets banished, you don't even care because it's not even like an important combo piece. It's just like a nice extender to have if you have it. So yeah, Desires really just helps you get your plays going. It's a plus one, helps break boards. You guys already know about that card and what it does. Next off, into your extenders you play, you play one copy of Monster Born and one copy of World Legacy Succession. Uh, so next to Monster Born, World Legacy Succession actually is the greatest extender in the game, in my personal opinion. Monster Born, Revive Anything, World Legacy Succession, basically the same thing, just revive anything. World Legacy Succession and Monster Born also serve as more copies of Tenyu's. Because you go normal at 10, you link it off, then uh, revive it back, and then link off into your higher link place. Really, really cool cards. Plus, a cool thing with Succession is that uh, even though it says that you have to summon to a zone link monster points to, uh, you can summon it to a zone that like an opponent's link monster points to, which is also really, really cool. Essentially, it gets around the whole, I guess, limit on the card. Last two one ups you play one copy of Foolish Burial, one copy of Upstart Goblin. Uh, I didn't know what to put for a 40th card, so I just kind of threw an upstart. It, it always works. Uh, once uh, Upstart is that card where if you guys are thinking on playing one more copy of any other card in this deck, cut upstart for it. And Foolish Burial is just mandatory, guys. So Mirror is actually very, very important in this deck. And uh, it helps you get all your plays going. So Foolish Burial, Mirror, and the card that you saw before, Vessel for the Dragon, is very, very important in this deck. And yeah, more copies of Mirror You actually want to draw Mirror in this deck, funny enough. Lastly, of the two traps that we play, play two copies of Fists of the Unrivaled Tenny. This card's like an Infernity Barrier for the deck. It's very, very good. And it also has a secondary effect where if it's if this set card is destroyed by your opponent's card, you can spell summon a non-effect monster from your uh, extra deck, which is really cool because it just gets you a free body on board if your opponent is greedy enough to go after your back row. And if they are not greedy enough to go after your back row, then you just get a free negate. So really, really good card. 
Uh, another cool thing is that it's not once per turn. I mean, you, if you draw both of them, then you can actually set both of them and just use both of them. And yeah, really cool. It doesn't destroy, which is the unfortunate part, but besides that, really, really good card. So that's for the main deck, guys. Uh, if you guys noticed, uh, I'm not playing supporting engines that you might have seen in other decks. Like, uh, I have seen some people experimenting with cards like Unexpected Die and Rescue Rabbit and Mystery Shell Dragon. And if you guys want, you guys can play a small little Rescue Rabbit engine in the deck. Personally, I'm trying to minimize on Bricks as much as I can. And, Re and Rescue Rabbit is one of those cards where it's really, really good, but you, the amount of Bricks that you have to play for it is kind of ridiculous. So, um, uh, yeah, well, if you guys want, you guys can play it. Personally, I didn't like it. But yeah, that's the main deck. Off to the extra deck. So, for the Link ones, play one copy of Link Spider, uh, one copy of Link Rebo. This is uh, standard. It's for your Mirror Mirror and for your Phantom Sky Blaster. Don't have to get too deep into those. And you play your triple copies of Monk of the Tenny. You make this using any non Link Tenny monster, so basically any of the main deck Tennies. Or, I guess, when the Synchro monster comes out, you could use that as well to make it. But yeah, it just. Really, really good card. It basically it's the reason why this deck can play because you would special tenny, link it off to special again, and then go off into your plays. You have to play three of it because you often go through two or more in the turn. Next off into your link two tennies, you play two copies of Shaman of the Tenny. Um, you don't have to play three of this card. You can if you really really want to, but even then, like one of them is like mandatory. The second one is just nice to have. So yeah, three is not mandatory at all. A three is uh, honestly I think three is overdoing it two is already kind of pushing it but uh yeah anyways what shaman does is on summon you can discard a card so not on summon just once per turn you can discard a card then special summon back a worm monster from your graveyard this is how you revive back your mirror mirror and then for the rest of the turn after you evacuate this effect monsters that are special from the extra deck can't besides worms can't use their effects which is fine because you can still summon them and then just using your opponent's turn really really nice card and Arctic monster born so why wouldn't you play it then you play, the last thing too is one copy of Nightmare Phoenix. Uh, why not? Phoenix is out any problematic back row. Not that the deck has problems out of your back row, but yeah, Phoenix just kind of gives you that extra push. So yeah, it's a really nice card to play. Then you play two copies of Berserker of the Tenny for your Link 3. Uh, honestly, this card, you never really hard make it, and you, uh, you often just special it off with this card's effect. So yeah, that's why I play Berserker. Uh, it just, besides that, it's a 3k body. And it comboing off with your uh, Nahada basically just outs any monster in the game. So, yeah. Uh, then the last thing once you play, you play the one link for the one copy of your Apalusa Bow of the Goddess. So I tried to keep this deck as budget as possible, but there are certain cards like Apalusa, which you just, you, you, you just kind of have to play the card. Like, it's just so good because... This deck can just swarm monsters very easily, and in many instances, you might not know what to do with the monsters, and it's like, oh wait, just link everything off in the Appaloosa and make four negates for free. So, yeah, and Appaloosa is the reason why you guys will see later on in the video, where you have a sick two-card combo to end on five negates, or five interruptions. So a really, really good card, mandatory. Out of the synchros you play, you play the one seven, you play one copy of Yazzie, your whole deck is worms, so why wouldn't you play Yazzie? Pop a card, special mirror mirror, go to crazy plays, why not do it? Uh, and by the way, the, the way you make Yazzie is with a, a hand trap, like uh, Asher Ogre plus one of your level 4 tenies. doesn't come up too often, but when it comes up, it comes up and is very strong. Then you play, for the, the eights, you play one Omega and one Borlold Savage Dragon. But Savage Dragon is definitely better than Omega, but Omega still comes up. Because ripping cards out of your opponent's hand and putting back banished tenies is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, you make these using either a hand trap and like some other ways that you could do it. But the main way is you would use a level four Mermite and another level four to do it. So yeah. Then after the last extra watch you play, you play one copy of Abyss Dweller. You play nine or including Sky Blaster, you play 10 level four monsters in the deck and 10 use our free special summons, meaning every turn you can at least make a Dweller and many times you can make Dweller back with multiple negates behind that, which just is enough to beat certain decks. So yeah. So guys, that's it for the main deck and the extra deck. 40 in the main, 15 in the extra, very standard. Now let's get off into a sick two-card combo. All right guys, so this is the two-card combo. So technically it's two and a half cards because you need a card to discard, but really it's just two cards. And the two cards are gonna be your vessel for the dragon cycle and one copy of, well, it doesn't matter, but it could just be any tenny that you want, uh, which you play 15 tenny, so really you just need to draw vessel and you have it. So you're gonna start off by, you're gonna special summon your tenny and then you're gonna link it off into your monk. Cool, so now you control a normal monster, meaning you can activate Vessel to 
dump any worm monster and then add a new worm monster. So you're gonna send your mirror to the graveyard and you're gonna add any tiny monster that you haven't special summoned already. So in this case, I special the dark one, so I'm gonna add the wind one to my hand. So I special Vish Vishuda and I'm gonna add Nahata. Now you're gonna special out Nahata from the hand and then you're gonna link off Nahata and Monk because they are both worms into your copy of Shaman of the Ten. Cool. Now you're gonna activate Shaman's effect to ditch your random card and special back your Mirror from your graveyard. Make sure not to summon it to any of its zones because then you're gonna clog your zones and then you won't get the most value that you can. Use Mirror's effect three times. So if you guys are counting, that is a level four Mirror now. So you're gonna make your four tokens, or sorry, your three tokens. One token is gonna turn into your Link Spider, while the other token is gonna turn into your Link Rebo. Cool. Now you're gonna go Link. Now over here you have actually many plays. If you have another tiny monster in your hand, you could summon it and then make a Borderload Savage Dragon if you want in the Mirror Mirror. But in this case, once again, just two-word combo, so I'm just gonna show you the standard stuff. You're gonna link all four of these away, but not into Asaryuja. You're gonna link them all off into an Appaloosa. So Appaloosa now has four counters on it. So Appaloosa is negating four monster effects and it has 3,600 attack, which is really, really good. So, so far, this is four negates in itself, which is why you have to play the card. It's busted, you know? Like, I just made four negates off two cards with a 30 cent deck. So, yeah. And then, uh, during your opponent's turn, so you're just gonna pass with this because, uh, unfortunately, Shaman of the Tenny locks you out of monster effects that aren't, uh, that, that aren't worms. So you're gonna go wait for your opponent's turn and then you go use Link Rebo's effect to tribute off the token to special it back from the graveyard. So basically your opponent has to deal with this, which when you look at it, it might not look like much, right? It's just two monsters, right? But Abelusa has four negates on it and Link Rebo is gonna interrupt one attack. So four plus one, that's five. That's five interruptions that you just made with this deck. So this deck does have a lot more support coming in the next set. So guys, when that set drops, when Chaos Impact drops, be sure to stay tuned for an updated 10 e deck. But for now, this is the board that you're gonna be making like basically with every single hand, as long as you get some way to Mirror Mirror. So uh, yeah, the, and a really cool thing with Link Creepo is that one of the major flaws with the card Appaloosa is that, yeah, it is four negates or however many negates as you want, but once Appaloosa's attack gets low enough, your opponent's just gonna attack over it and then you lose out on all those negates, right? Link Creepo protects the Appaloosa, meaning Instead of almost a form of interruption, this card's more of like almost a form of defense as well. So Appaloosa is backed by Link Rebo, which is backed by an Appaloosa. So it's just like they work really well together. And yeah, you, like most decks just lose to this. Like against Salamangrate, they just lose, just negate everything. They lose against Dangerous Thunder, they have face four negates, they lose against uh, like an Orcus matchup, they, you negate everything, they lose. Like it's a very, very good card. And yeah. So, yeah, guys, that was a combo. So, yeah, guys, that was the video. If you guys liked it, be sure to like it. Be sure to comment down below any suggestions that you guys have for our future videos. Be sure to tell a friend to tell a friend. And as always, stay frosty, my friends.